So I was looking around at the tabletop role-playing games that are available and I was looking for reviews of some smaller publications online and when it came to finding videos, I could find plenty for the latest release from Wizards of the Coast and a little bit of Pathfinder, but I really couldn't find out much else about any other games, so I thought I'd take advantage of my massive collection and my love of even just reading these to tell you about some of the games that I really love. So maybe you can check them out as well. So the first one up today is Monster of the Week, which is by Michael Sands. And it's definitely not a small publication by any means, being from Evil Hat. But it's definitely one that I haven't seen as many people talk about, and I think it's really special. Monster of the Week is a Powered by the Apocalypse system, which means you roll 2d6, and depending on that roll, you might have a good outcome, a bad outcome, or a mixed outcome. The game is kind of based on a particular serialized genre of media. Think Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Scooby-Doo, or Supernatural. And if that doesn't give you a clue about what this game is about, it's a game where the players get together to solve a mystery that has supernatural elements. Monster of the Week is a game that's based upon a serialized genre of media. Think Supernatural, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, or Scooby-Doo. And if that doesn't give you a clue about what this is about, it's a game where the game master creates a mystery for the players to solve that will definitely involve the supernatural, somehow. Monster of the Week is a little bit different to other tabletop role-playing games I've seen out there because it doesn't imply setting beyond a contemporary era. Especially as some of the playbooks, that is the character archetypes, pack some super powerful firearms. The Game Master is known as the Keeper and they are in charge of creating the setting, which can be super daunting. I'm most familiar with people using something familiar to them like a school, a town, or even a building that they know and kind of scrubbing the serial numbers off it. And I do really like that Monster of the Week is a contemporary game. It's just different to what a lot of other games are. While this book looks really dense, everything is really well marked out in different chapters with a really helpful table of contents. The main bulk of the content that will interest most people is the different playbooks. These are the different characters you can sort of choose to make based on the archetypes you find in these TV shows. And there's plenty of options for customization with special moves or even taking a move from a different playbook as your character evolves. The really cool thing that I think about this game is you evolve by failing. Whenever something doesn't work out, you mark experience, and when you have enough experience, you get to improve your character. I think that encourages players to take risks and go for it rather than play it safe and try just XP grind. Sands explains that the point of the game is to come together and solve a mystery involving the supernatural. I really like that. I think... It helps with player buy-in just to say this is who we are and this is what we're here to do. The book also runs you through the many roles and hats that the Keeper plays to run a story in this called an arc. There are also two pre-written adventures in here so if you're just keen to check it out there's already something that's ready to go there. If you're keen to create your own world and your own story, I will say it can be really intimidating because you have to create your own monster stat blocks apart from a few examples they give, as well as constructing the mystery, but they make it all really rewarding to do so. The Keeper's main job is to drop clues for the players to find so that they can solve the mystery. 
there is also a sort of ticking time aspect that is baked into each mystery that if things are not solved or resolved, things will get worse. Evil Hat Productions has done something amazing where they've made a fair amount of the content that's in this book available online. Um, mostly it's the playbooks, so that way if you own the book you're not there trying to photocopy them. But they also have these amazing crib sheets for both the players and the keeper. I genuinely love this role-playing game. It's not really like anything else I've played before, and I think that does make it really special. There are some things that I think could be improved. The players have a very set list of questions that they're supposed to ask the Keeper, and I found that sometimes you need to modify them to get the ball rolling, but that's all up to you, the Keeper and the players, to decide. Monster of the Week on this side of the globe retails for around 45 to 50 dollars and in the one book you do get everything you need to run a continuous story with your friends i think it's well worth the purchase especially with all the free content and bits and pieces that evil hat has put online there is one additional book which is a supplement to this first book the tome of mysteries which is behind me there sometime if you guys ever want me to talk about it or any others you might see in the background, do let me know. If I've left out any thoughts that you think are well worth mentioning or you would like more detail, do let me know. This is my first time trying this sort of thing, so I really appreciate all the feedback. <laughs>